going to be doing some homework tips for the chapter 3 homework problem set. This is for Principles of Accounting 1, BA 2, uh, 211. So I'm going to go ahead and start off. What I'm going to show you, so what you can see here is the actual solved uh, problem set. Okay, so I'm going to walk through and I'm going to talk about some of the tips that you may want to watch as you complete yours. Uh, the numbers are going to be different between the ones I'm going to show you now and the ones that you're going to go in and have to do as, uh, in homework. So this is, uh, I guess, in addition to the tips you already have available to you through the homework, right? So you have that little uh, hints link over to the left you can click on and it'll kind of walk you through some of the things. This is in addition to that, so it may be helpful. You can watch it, uh, kind of fast forward through it, hit some spots that may be useful for you. Anyway, so here we go. So problem number one, one of the important things with this problem, and this is just a tip, I'm not gonna walk you through the whole thing, is you need to remember to include the third bullet point figure, which is uh, this figure right here, right? Third bullet point. You need to include that figure in the cash basis expenses. Okay, so when you do cash basis expenses, down here in the in the table, mine's three thirty three thousand six hundred. You need to include it in that. So that's one of the tricks, right? That may not be super apparent. So here's kind of an explanation of some of the calculations that are done. So just so you have that as well as a reference. Okay, and so for number two, you need to remember to enter debit or credit in the DR or CR question field. That's going to be right in here, right? So this field right here, you need to make sure to put your debits and credits in there. That's something that oftentimes is missed. And you need to do this for in steps one and two. Okay, in this part of the problem, on in A, right, in this part of the problem, it gives you the numbers for step one and step two. Okay, this is the first one. This is the one I'm talking about, A, right here. In this, in A, it gives it, it gives you the numbers for step one and step two. Uh, prepaid deferred expenses adjustments begin with an asset debit balance in step one. This is the balance at the start of the year. Step two is the balance uh, or Step or step one minus the adjustment for insurance expired. In other words, step two, in the unexpired is the unexpired balance at the end of the year. Okay, so this this right here, 950. This is the unexpired balance at the end of the year. That's another way to kind of put it. Okay, step three is the adjusting entry or the difference between the beginning of the year balance and the unexpired balance at the end of the year, or step three is the part that's expired, right? So now we're going down to B here. In B, in this part of the problem, it gives you the numbers for step one and step three. So it gives you this number here and this number down here. You need to solve for step two number, right? Now we're on to C. In this part of the problem, it gives you the numbers for step one and step three. You can then solve for step two. Same, same kind of setup. Accounting, the accounting is the same. The only difference is the use of the rent instead of insurance. So we got prepaid rent on C here instead of prepaid insurance, which was above on B. So here's some explanations as well down on the bottom that will hopefully help you. This is going to be similar, and again, the same tip. Make sure to put these debits and credits in here uh, as you fill out the, the different sections. Okay, so that's something that's often missed just for some extra points, right? So if you want to get 100%, make sure you get your debits and credits set there. Um, so an A right here, starting with A right there. So in this part of the problem, it gives you the numbers for step one and step two. You just need to solve for step three. B, this part of the problem, it gives you the numbers, uh, the number for step two, 
as the supplies remaining at year end. So step two is year end balance. To solve for the number in step one, you need to add the supplies purchased during the year to the balance at the beginning of the year. Okay, so that's this one. It doesn't necessarily give you this, but it gives you the beginning balance and the purchases. You gotta add those together. Then you need to solve for uh, three, once you have those first two numbers. Okay, now we're going on to C. In this part of the problem, it gives you the number for step two. Supplies available at the end of the year. Again, and you need to then solve for step one by adding the beginning balance and the purchases. Then once you have those two, you can solve for the adjustment, which are the supplies that are used and expensed. And here's an explanation here at the bottom that gives you some calculations for that. Okay. Step four, uh, when, when you do these things, you got to make sure when you do journal entries, you got to make sure you have at least one debit and one credit per journal entry. Right, that's kind of a given. And you gotta make sure your debit and credit for per journal entry a balance. So in each one of these, it's easy because there's only two accounts for each that we're gonna be using. So in A here, the very first one, right? This journal entry requires you to, to figure out how much of the paid uh, for insurance coverage was used. In this case, the number of months paid for are the number of months that are pat uh, that uh, and the number of months that have passed for the paid for number is the amount that is expensed as uh, the insurance expense or the debit. The credit is, or the, not the insurance payable or the, it's uh, the prepaid insurance I should say. Prepaid insurance account. Okay, and then B uh, for B here, a uh, journal entry requires you to figure out how much of the supplies were used. Uh, this is calculated by finding the difference between the total supplies available at the end of the period, right? And so the, here's the calculation for the supplies right here. Total supplies at the B, end of the period, which is uh, 1,400. The amount at the beginning is the supplies, the beginning balance plus the supplies purchased the difference here is going to be um, your supplies used. So these two are added up. Subtract the ending balance, and there you got your your supplies used. On question five, so we need to remember to, of course, again, re enter these debits or credits right here uh, in this column. Okay, don't forget those. Um, so in A here, in this part of the problem, uh, it gives you the numbers for step one and step three. You just need to add them together for, for step three. B, uh, it gives you uh, the number for step one, right? Number for step one is zero because the first year, and we, haven't, we didn't have anything in there to begin with, okay? Uh, depreciation will be calculated at the end of the period. To calculate step two and three, you need to subtract the salvage value from the cost and then divide by the useful life. This tells you how much you need to expense per year. That'll give you a straight line depreciation. Now we're on C already. It says in this part of the problem, number uh, for step one is zero again. And we're gonna do that same thing. We're gonna do the straight line and then here's the calculations down here at the bottom here. Straight line depreciation to find out the expense for the year. Question six, problem number six. Uh, so again, remember you gotta have at least one debit and one credit and you gotta have things balanced. In A, since the occupancy began in, on November 1st, then two months have passed because we're doing this, this at the end of the year. So we've got November and December. The amount paid is for one year, so 12 months. To solve for the number, divide the, the rent advanced, which uh, is for, it is, uh, it constitutes 12 months worth of rent that we paid in advance. And then, so that'll give you the monthly amount and then multiply by two. So there's several different ways to do this, but basically you're trying to get two months out of that 12 month amount that you paid. So that fraction. Uh, this will give you the, so yeah, so the debit is to unearned rent, 
revenue. Credit is to rent revenue. Number uh, the B here, the next one down, is journal entry requires you to figure out how much to credit for service revenue, which increases revenue, and it's a debit to unearned service revenue, uh, which is lowering the unearned liability. To calculate, divide the amount paid by the customer by the number of treatments the payment was for. Then multiply this per payment amount by the remaining months in the year, because we do what, one treatment per month. And then see, finally here at the end, we've got unearned rent revenue that we're gonna be doing. So, uh, and this journal entry requires you to figure out how much to credit for, uh, for, the, for the rent revenue, right? On the, and that's your calculation. So this is gonna constitute this amount here that we paid is gonna be for six months. Uh, of which we've used four months. And so that's why we multiply it by four months because that's what we've used so far. So this this right here, this first part is just giving us the per month amount. And then we know we have four of those months, so that gives us the total that we need to adjust by, used up rent, right? The rent that we've used, which is basically, on a lot of these, it's just time passing, right? Using something up, uh, like whether it's insurance or rent, it just means the time has passed. So uh, on, on this problem seven, again, we need to make sure to get our debits and credits here in this column. And then for this first one, uh, it says, so what we're gonna do is in this step, the problem it gives you, gives you the number for step one as the cash advance. So here's our cash advance. To calculate the number for step three, you will need to divide the, the number in step one by the number of months of legal services the advance was for. Then, multiply by the number of months that have passed in the current year. For example, if the payment was for 11,600 and that was on October 5th, uh, 1st, then divide 11,600 by three. Okay, here's, here's the calculations down here. 11,000, the total, so we've got four months is what it was for. That's our denominator on the bottom. The numerator is going to be the number of months that have passed or that are remaining uh, that we, that since the time we started till the end of the year. Okay, and then B, in this, in this amount, of, uh, the step one is calculated by multiplying the subscription cost by the number of subscribers. To calculate the figures for two and three, you need to divide step one number in half. Uh, because we're halfway through the year, right? So in this case, we're July 1, which is going to be a half of the year is what actually passes. So we're going to divide it in half. Here's another way to calculate it. Total subscription divided by 12 months. That'll give you the per month subscription times 100 is total revenue uh, times 6 because only half the year has passed. So that's one way to look at it. Question 8 here. And question 8, remember... You have to have at least one debit and one credit and, and the, the numbers for each journal entry have to balance. Okay, and, and then for A here at the very beginning, it says this is a case where the revenue has been earned but not recorded. A payment for the service has also been re not received, so we haven't received cash. A debit to the accounts receivable and a credit to the revenue are the accounts. The amount of the given number is in the problem setup. Next one, this is once for B. For B here, this is the case where the interest revenue has been earned but not recorded or, or uh, received, right? We haven't received any money for the interest revenue as well. A payment for the interest has not been received. A debit to interest receivable and a credit to the revenue are the accounts. The amount is the given number in the problem setup. Number C, or C here at the very bottom, the last one, in this case, the, uh, is the case where the revenue has been earned but not recorded. A payment for the service has also not been received. A debit to the accounts receivable and a credit to the revenue are the accounts. The amount is, uh, is in the problem set up as well. So these are pretty easy. They give you a lot of the numbers. You just need to set it up for that. No cash has been received for these. Uh, problem number nine. To solve this problem, we, we Look at the accounts related to the forgotten adjustments. In the case of the forgotten insurance that expired, an asset prepaid in, uh, to prepaid insurance 
remains too high. An asset prepaid insurance remains too high and expenses was missed. On the next item, liability is missed in terms of wages payable but not recorded and the expense is missed. The cumulative impact is understatement of expenses. So this right here will also explain it, the calculation here. Question uh, 10. Here's the next one, here's the setup. Here are the accounts and some calculations. A really good tool to use on these adjustments is a T account. And that's part of the exercise in this chapter is to understand that wh whether the numbers they give us are the the balances that we want to get to or the, the actual adjustments themselves. So that's going to be something that you can, as you go through these, something that you'll learn is which accounts or what setup are they giving me the actual adjustments that I put into the journal entry? What are the ones where they aren't giving me the actual adjustment amounts, but instead they're giving me the balances that I have to use to solve for the adjustment amount in the journal entry? Okay, so now we're at the now we're at the end last couple of problems. And these problem sets you've got to do like you've done before, and that is enter the journal entries. I'm gonna throw those out there, throw this out there so you can kind of see the journal entry setup, just the basic format. Your numbers may be different. Most likely they will be. So these journal entries are gonna be used later on to well, the journal entries will feed into our trial balance, right? And the trial balance amounts are gonna be used to build our financial statements. So this is what the trial balance looks like. Your numbers may be different, right? So we're gonna be using the adjusted trial balance here and we're going to complete the income statement, statement of owner's equity, and the balance sheet. So you, you've just viewed all those. You can definitely pause the video and, and look at them if you want to. Now, the very last one, some, some of these are, I've been getting from the students that these are the trickiest ones, which I definitely understand. So these are the accounts that are going to be used right here, right? The income statement column, in the income statement column here, these are just going to be expenses or revenues, right? Revenues are the earns here. These earned are revenues. Anything that has expense in it, of course, is going to be an expense for this income statement. Balance sheet, these are the other accounts. If you go back to your general journal, the expenses are going to be here. Whatever that other account is, that's going to be in the balance sheet. Expense, other account, right? Uh, down here on the earned, the earned is the revenue, which will be a credit, of course. The other account is going to be your balance sheet account. So that, that shows here. Expenses, revenues are going to be in, in the income statement. Balance sheet will be the other account, the asset or the liability, okay? And now let's go ahead and look for, to the next problem here real quick. And again, this one is the same setup. So you're going to have your journal entry here. That is going to populate your trial balance, which you're going to use to build your financial statements. Trial balance here. Your financial statements are going to come from that. Statement of owner's equity, balance sheet. And then you're going to do your impact on income. Same thing, go back to your journals, your general journal, pull off those expenses and those revenue accounts, and they're going to fill up the income statement column over here. Balance sheet is going to have the others, the prepaid rent, which is an asset, office supplies, asset, right? Uh, accounts receivable, asset, Wage, wages payable, this one's a liability. So you're going to put those in there, and then if it is, this is something to remember as well, if it's an expense, it's going to have a negative impact on net income. So put it as a negative number. It's not going to accept a positive number for an expense, right? If it's a revenue, put it as a positive number. And then add it up. The net income before adjustments on these, you're going to find that in the trial or in the income statement. Okay, so go back to the income statement and flip your income statement to unadjusted. That will tell you what your net income is before adjustment. That's where you find that number. You're gonna pull that number over to this spreadsheet and then the net income after adjustments, this should be the same number right here 
as your on your income statement if we flip it back to adjusted. So that should be the same number. And that'll be a check for you just to make sure you got everything straight. All right, hopefully this tip video helped out. If you have any questions, contact me through email, call me. We can do a live um, meeting if you want to meet, if you can if you can meet on campus or we can meet virtually using the um, virtual office. We'll talk to you later. Have a good day. Bye.